Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen. So today we're just having fun with simple, simple techniques like a negative painting on this little teeny sketchbook that I have that I love. So these are like hollyhocks or like a little field and just go over this step by step. And it's always good to start small. I have this little teeny small sketchbook from Tumatra. I've done several tutorials on this sketchbook like this one before. So go check that out. Um, this is just kind of a fun little loose hollyhock and the Patreon members get additional little fun one. So if you're a Patreon member, click the link in the description box below. Uh, if you're not, to join Patreon. But for everybody else, we're going to just do a simple little tutorial on negative painting. Kind of fun, kind of playful. And if you have any questions in the comment section and let's get started. So some of you might recognize this sketchbook. This is from Tumatra. It's 100% cotton. I wish they made a bigger size. And I've got some tutorials that I've done in here. Um, this is one I did in Rome by myself, but there's a tutorial for this one. And let's see, this one. I think there's one for this one. This one's a private. This one was from a retreat. This one was a tutorial as well. And this one, uh, these are ones I did in Bend, Oregon. Trying to fill up this little sketchbook and get another one actually. It's really cute. And this one was a tutorial, which is a really great one. You should check it out. So this one I figured, let's do another floral. Um, and we'll play around with like negative space. Um, if you don't know negative space, it's like, you know, we don't paint white with watercolor like you do with acrylic and oil. You have to leave the paper white. So I'll make this clip. Uh, I think I lost my clip. This part, so I don't keep having it get in the way. I'm gonna paint this side. I'm going to use masking fluid and I might just like help myself guide along. Maybe do some like kind of cool hollyhocks. It's just a mechanical pencil. Kind of put the, like, where I'm going to put the stakes here, kind of going like this. Maybe some small ones there. And then I'll take this, this is PBO drawing gum. Now if you can just, you don't have to use masking fluid and kind of paint around it, but it's a lot easier if you do. And we'll just do some circles. Maybe some little off circles here, but you know what hollyhocks look like. They're just basically circles. You see them doing little circles? Some are kind of like funky shapes. So picture if we had like funkier shapes, smaller, and do a couple of little ones up this way. And some circles. And it doesn't have to be a hollyhock, it can be other kind of flowers too. We can play with um, doing like little daisies. I'm gonna put some daisies on the bottom kind of mush these little circles and do a few little doodads up top. This one's a lot of, <laughs> I got a lot of it here, kind of lift some of it up. So what I suggest for um, the bottom half, it's kind of splatter it, but you want to cover the top. So I just put a piece of just paper here, cover the top, get your little brush, I always splatter like how I splatter is I slam a brush on top of another brush. So oh, that's a big one. <laughs> I'm trying to get little ones. Here we go. Move this up a little bit. Doesn't want to cooperate, does it? Some little splatters like that. The big ones, I can remove those big ones. They're kind of goofy. Or we could put little dots. And you can actually just paint little daisies too. This brush isn't uh, small enough to get little lines. You might need a tinier brush, but I just think the little dabs, or even put some more dabs here, to kind of mush these little, kind of sweet. It just gives it a variety. Again, you can just do the hollyhocks like I showed you bigger circles, little kind of small circles. And if you want to put a couple little dabby doos for some wildflowers down here, do that. And this is not a good brush that I'm using. It's like an old crappy kind of brush because it will wreck your nice brushes. So don't use your nice brushes. So that's all you do. You do like a couple of lines here and then do some doodads down the bottom. And then you have to let that dry. It will be nice and sticky when it dries. 
So now let's dry. Just grab your brush. I'm using a stiffer brush today. This is the Aqua Elite Princeton number 12. You know, choose whatever you want. I'm just doing this. Um, for some deeper greens, Prussian blue, yellow, burnt umber, or burnt sienna. So here's the burnt umber. I'm going to fair amount of this. Clean it off. Grab my yellow. So this is like a medium green, but as you add more Prussian blue, it's deeper. A little brown, like with the burnt sienna or burnt umber, get even deeper. We want a variety of color here. We're going to have some lighter greens too. Um, you can have this yellow add in. Let's see what my peacock blue is. It's not here, and it might be here. It could be, this could be like a gray. That's gray. I think my peacock blue is over here on this palette. Get some lighter greens, some olive greens, uh, ultramarine blue deep and yellow. Make kind of like a mossy green. This is cadmium yellow deep that I use. I'm going to be playing around once wet on wet and adding in some deeper colors with the blues. Make this green a little blue. Add some burnt sienna and go back and add the blue. Let me get olive green here. Playing around with different greens. I like to have them all ready to go so that you're not like struggling trying to mix them as you're painting it because we want this wet on wet feel. Um, go back and grab my yellow. There's the, this is the peacock blue. More yellow, more chartreuse kind of color. And just add some water. So we're going to play with this whole guy. Um, start with some light green because you want to put the light green in first and then kind of work around that. So I'm just kind of see, I'm just kind of going like this with my brush. The lines, you can put the line in for the hollyhock. Now I thought about this, I could have put um, masking fluid where this, this line is right I'm doing right now because now I have to paint around that. Didn't really think well about that one and adding some leaves. But sometimes you don't even know. So I'm gonna add these leaves like this. Where are they gonna go? You, unless you're really super planning it out. And I see how I'm just kind of mushing my brush, the tip of it, kind of making little leaves on the side as I'm talking to you. You can put some stems. No, don't make it super detailed because you're gonna have to paint around it. You might make yourself a little bit crazy. So I'm, see, I'm just going like that. And I'll push down on the side, left and right. And then down here, we'll get a little kind of fun, just kind of wiggling, adding in some stems in a bit. Just like this, see, I'm wiggling the tip. I'm barely even touching the paper. It's kind of like a little dance I do. Now you can start to grab some of the other muted greens, the olive and some of this, and then all mixed with that. So I'm getting a variety of stuff here. I'll even grab some burnt sienna, water that down. We don't want it all pretty, pretty. We want to mix it up. Now up here, we want it much darker. We have to wait till this light green dries. We start playing with the darker green around that. You see it's gonna blend right in there and bleed. So we really wanna wait till it dries. So let's concentrate on the bottom half here first. We can get some darker tones. Again, just taking this nice tip. It's very wet. So we're bleeding in some color. We get that bright color here. We have a Kelly green happening. Very kind of loose and wild. If you want to put down like a flat kind of color like this and then go back in and add more lines and things like that. So I've got some base of color down here. I want to leave it. I want all this to dry and come back and kind of paint around it a little bit. All right, now that it's dry, I'm going to start to take some of my darker greens. I'm getting this wet. It's kind of dried. Grabbing my Prussian blue in there. And we're going to kind of go around our foliage and the lovely hollyhock. See, we're still using this big old brush. Getting it loosely around that foliage. So there's that dark green. 
you can kind of do it in little sections, right? And you can add some browns in there, play it up, get that dark green, even add more blue. So it could be a little more blue than the green kind of happening around the blooms and the foliage. You obviously want it darker if you want to do this negative type painting. So this brush is great because it has a great point. I can kind of really loosely go around all those little stems that I'd painted. And then once I painted those, I can go in between. See, now I'm filling that in and kind of play around with adding color. Here's an ultimate blue deep. Just watering this down, putting that color in. I can take some of this color, kind of go in here. You know, it doesn't have to be one solid color. You can play around with adding many different tones, which is kind of fun. And even up in here, like go in between these grasses, leave a little white. Gotta have fun with this negative painting kind of scenario. And I'm going to go back in here and do the same thing. So I just outline with this color, as you can see. And it's not super tight. I'm going pretty loose to outline it and then just kind of filling it in. And then just grabbing some other colors, other greens that are deeper and darker than the one I had. You can actually add some paints gray or lunar black because it's like very green, but you could add some other cheaper color. This is the lunar black I have down here at the end of my palette. Play with playing that in there. It's a granulating color, so it's kind of interesting. I'll get some color, I'm mixing up all these different colors to get this color. And again, I'm being kind of loose, not being perfect, trying to get in between those little blooms and the stems. It's much easier <laughs> on the bottom half where there wasn't stems. The stem part was hard because I didn't think, oh my God, Ellen lost her brain cells for a minute um, to put masking fluid where the stems were. So now I'm adding in some depth. Once it's wet, I'll go back in here and I can play around with some Prussian blue in between some of this, even deeper. Like I said, that Luna black, kind of go in here, get this deep color around those lovely white blooms that will be there. So they really pop. The negative painting is great. It's like going around. So with watercolor, like I mentioned, um, you have to leave the white. And let's play around with some other greens. It can all just be like one note. You can put in some purples there. Loosen this up. Even some turquoise. There's some turquoise that I have. I'm like playing around with putting some colors in here. So it's not one dimensional. Interesting. Okay. And we don't even mind any kind of cauliflower blooms because it's just a kind of a wild background. And I'll just fill in some of these areas in here in between some of those stems. Okay. Now we're going to just not fuss with this part. I might grab a little bit more blue though. I want this a little bit deeper. If you've messed up, you can play with it a little bit by adding some white watercolor. I don't know if you've ever tried playing with white watercolor, but you should. Here I'm going to fill in some more of these. It's a lovely color. Okay, so now we did that part. And you can go down in here and kind of add some the stems I talked about earlier. We did the light colors and we can go and add some depth with the darker stems and go around those little areas that we kind of splattered. So they really show up. So a lot of little white splatters in here. I'm kind of putting some dark, deep green stems right here. So Prussian blue, lunar black, a little bit deeper greens, play around with that. Just kind of tapping. This is all masking fluid here. So I'm kind of just adding in some leaves. So curve your brush like this, like that, around where those white areas are for the splatter. So when we remove them, you can see them better. 
because we have the dark color around them. You won't see it as much as the light color is there. We need a deep dark color. I'm going to grab some of this lunar black, which is kind of fun. Put a little bit of that color around it, and now you really see it. Go back and add some Prussian blue, and really just paint over those little white areas. And throw some dark color down the bottom. Okay, kind of looks cool now, right? So we're going to let this whole thing dry, and we're going to remove the masking fluid, and then see what happens. All right, I use this. It's called a rubber cement pickup to pick up all the masking fluid. It's like the best thing. I mean, some people use tape, and this is just easier. You're just kind of like rubbing, going back and forth, and it picks it up and keeps it all on the side there, the corners. Look how cute. I'm going to add some color now. That's the white we splatter. Now it's a little thicker than I want. It was like tinier, but it's kind of cute in the bottom there, isn't it? We can use the same brush. Let me see if I got mixed some of these. Make sure I get all of it up. Okay. Um, let's grab some bright rose. This cadmium red light. Loosen this up. All right, and even grab, make a purple with um, ultramarine blue deep. I'm gonna get some dirty purple green. <laughs> excuse me, dirty blue there. And bright rose, make it a nice purple kind of tone happening. And we'll use all these to our advantage. So we can take some pink, loosen this up even more, and kind of throw this in the middle, kind of wiggling. It doesn't have to be so, so on center. You can grab some of the cadmium red light, kind of go on the side of that. Let me zoom in so you can see. Um, just do like a little line like this and you can add the pink in the center. You can start off by doing yellow dot too and then do the red around it. A couple of different ways to play around with this. And the yellow dot would be so on the center. So if you did the yellow dot, see that? It's cute, right? And you take the Academy Red Light you can go around it, almost like a little circle around it. Again, I'm using a big brush so it's not super tight. It's much looser going in there. Let that dry at the pink, a little bit of this purple, kind of like a shadow. Maybe I'll add more blue than more blue or purple. See a little shadow on the bottom there. Kind of cute, right? of those little center. Grab the pink, just do a little dot. And put a little dot, deeper dot in the center. You can make a light pink here and then make a deeper dot. And now we can play around with all these ones down here while this one's drying. I'm going to add some color up in here. It's really kind of sweet and fun. You guys remove the masking fluid and just kind of change those whitish flowers and adding some pinks and stuff like that. So go down here and we can add some pinks or keep it white. Even that um, cadmium red light. Sweet, right? Like little wildflowers. Because my intention originally was to have daisies, but sometimes just life happens and it doesn't look like a daisy, so you just turn into something else. I'm adding that color. I can take it off and add the purple blue color. Ooh, isn't that pretty? It's just easier if it's masked and then you go back in to be tapping with those colors. Or even yellow would be really, really pretty. I'm gonna grab some yellow, cabin yellow deep. That's what color I use. So you can put some of that in there. Really kind of bright. You can just take the yellow and go right over the greens too. See, boom, boom, boom. tap, tap. Just playing with negative spaces with painting. And even some of this might be a little too light. We can go back in with some color. I'll show you in a bit. So here's that ultimate blue deep. Just kind of water this down, like almost like a shadow under the center there. So it has some depth. And I'll go back in with pink on the side or even the red. And 
the center. This little dot. So you do like a light pink and then like a deeper pink dot. And look how different that looks. Just a pale pink and then a deeper pink. It's a little wildflowers in the bottom here, kind of sweet. Um, can add some greens back in here. Gonna add my cabin yellow deep and my peacock blue. And fill in some of those areas that are too very light. Could add a little bit of that up here too. Went over the deep green. You can play with that. And if I want, I can go back in and play with adding in some more depth again with the even darker parts of this. I got green on that. I'll show you like here. I really want this part to pop. So I'll go in here and kind of fill that space in. See? Negative painting. It really pops now, doesn't it? Zoom back out. Look how sweet. Now I feel like I'm missing some leaves and some of these that should have been lighter. So if I make the paint pretty thick, cabin yellow deep and a little bit of um, pe peacock blue, it's kind of thick. Another thing is to add the white watercolor and then you can kind of make these little stems and greens coming off the side here. Maybe a little bit more yellow. And if you have tried using white watercolor, you can add a little white watercolor to it too. A little bit here. And watch. It's like adding gouache. See, now we added that. I'll add a little bit more yellow. And then we have our lovely leaves kind of coming off. The stems that we kind of were missing. Sometimes you don't know until you paint the actual, you know, stem and see how it looks. I'll do up here, little dots. Actually, bigger leaves coming off. I'll add in some more color with some browns, change the leaf color a little bit. That's kind of sweet, isn't it? Just a simple painting, doing some negative painting. I'll add in some depth around this leaf. So that kind of really pops. You see, you go back in with a deeper green. That's one way to do like a really cute white negative painting flower with the masking fluid. Um, I also, you know, suggest like playing with the colors all in here. Mine are kind of bright. You can add some browns in there. You know, like I get little browns happening just to change it up a little bit. I grab some burnt sienna in here, kind of going right over my greens. You see, just changing this all up a little bit. Can't all be the same kind of colors everywhere. Just a really sweet painting. Let me know your thoughts on that. Uh, Patreon members get the additional one. Just playing with negative painting. You know, mask masking helps. Starting small really helps. Um, just moving around the color. Now the color right here for the hollyhocks, you really want to just get a little bit like deeper color right here, just so it looks almost like it's glowing in the sun. I'll add more pink reds in here. I like to add that little blue on the right hand side. Now, if you want to play with the white watercolor, you could add, like I said, the stems, different stems here, white watercolor with the yellow, you know, the stems up here, they're kind of missing, and a highlight here, I've grabbed a little bit of white, see, and a little bit of highlight, and the stem going up, little sneaky tricks. Kind of sweet to paint small. That's why I like to do it. And I have this wonderful hollyhock. Try some negative painting. There's ways to do it. You can paint around it. You can mask it. Because um, the watercolor white, it really is kind of like being with gouache. The best thing is trying to map it out and then mask it out. 
So I hope you enjoy this little small, little quick and easy watercolor. Play with these kind of elements, negative painting, these different types of flowers doing this. I think of white flowers that you have and maybe you want to go and if you're really good at painting a certain white flower, kind of draw that in, do some masking fluid and paint around it, some greenery. It's really kind of sweet. I mean, I'll go back and add some deeper color down here too. So thank you guys so much for stopping by my channel. I always encourage you to like, you know, just try different things. If it feels daunting, just do it anyway. Um, and the small little sketchbooks are my favorite because, you know, they're small and they're less intimidating and much, much more easier to, you know, navigate than a big painting if you're just starting out. So like I said, Patreon members get an additional tutorial. If you're a Patreon member, click the, if, you, if you're not a Patreon member, click the link in the description box below to become a Patreon member. We have all kinds of exclusive tutorials, extra stuff that's on, not, not on YouTube. You get first dibs on my workshops and watercolor retreats before the public. Um, lots of little perks and a Facebook group where you guys can share your stuff and chit chat. So thank you so much. Uh, and it's where you support my channel too. Uh, I hope you have a fantastic day. Take care and I'll speak to you soon.